Hi, hello, welcome to a bit of a different video to usual where I'm going to be showing you 10 different editor tricks that will not necessarily make you a better creator, but hopefully make you a more efficient one. So let's get into it. Trick number one are the hotkeys. So if you're on computer, you may know that you can use W, A, S, and D to move around blocks, but you can also use Q and E to rotate them, Alt, Q, and E to flip them in different directions, Shift, W, A, S, and D to tiny space it, and you can also do stuff like press R to rotate it smoothly, like so. There are also a bunch of others, but they are all listed over here in the keys tab here. If you keep scrolling here, you can see all of the different editor shortcuts. All right, tip number two is when you place down a portal here with this little checkbox that appears. This essentially shows you the bounding box for where the ground is going to be for each portal. It's really, really quite handy, but sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming if you have a bunch of portals. So what you can also do is go to the pause menu and click uncheck portals, and that'll uncheck every single portal here. Another little trick with this is if you start off with a game mode, there's actually no way to check where the ground is for this other than just playing and then stopping and then putting like maybe some blocks up here or whatever. But a way easier way to do that is just to place a portal of that game mode underneath the level and check check it on and you can see there's the ground up the top there. All right, so tip number three are the options. I'm sure you're aware that there is this option thing here for the level itself. And you can also go into this pause menu and there's a bunch of options down the left side here, but there's also another little tiny cog wheel right here that if you click it has a bunch of really, really useful options like increasing the buttons per row like this. You can see, I think this is what it is by default, but if you go into the pause menu and then this cog wheel, you can increase that to what you see in all of my videos like this. And there's also things like an enabling link controls, which basically gives you these things on the side. The next tip here is this RGB button down here. For some reason, I didn't know this existed for the longest time, but if you select this to a color here and then click this RGB button, you can actually adjust color one while seeing it in real time with the object. Do keep in mind though, that if you have a bunch of objects on the same color, they all shift simultaneously. Oh, that's funky. <laughs> and also when it comes to these colors up here with the background and ground and whatnot, you can also press this plus button and that brings up the RGB for that as well. So yeah. The next tip involves this outline bit here with these slopes right here. Now you can place these down and you may notice that if I make this the wave game mode here and hop into normal mode, I can get through that fairly easily, but if I go too high here, you can see I just kind of die to nothing. What am I dying to there? Well, if I enable the hitboxes, it becomes very clear what is happening. And this is what we call in the community inverted slopes. Here you can see these slopes are actually flipped around because these slope hitboxes, as much as it looks like it's just a line, the hitbox actually extends down. And the reason for that is because if you look at any other slope here, you can see that the slope actually extends all the way down here. And these slopes right here assume that the same happens there, but it's just nothing there. So make sure to always test for inverted slopes so that your gameplay doesn't become buggy and annoying. A simple way to do that is just to take a slope outline here and flip one around. If it goes further in than further out, that means you have an inverted slope there. If it's not inverted and you flip one around, it'll go further in like that. For the next tip here, we can go into mega hack and enable slider limit here. And basically this is what we normally call scale hack. So now I can scale this way past where it's meant to. However, if you don't have mega hack, there's a pretty simple way to get around this. There are a lot of different levels that use scaled up, for example, glow pieces. So I can go to any level that has a scaled up block that you want. My go-to was always Gunslinger Corridor for scaled up glow. Make a copy of the level like this. And once you find the scaled up glow piece that you want, for example, I want this one, you can go into the build tab, go all the way over to this C right here, and then click this plus, and that adds it to your custom object, like so. Custom objects are really cool because you can actually go between different levels and then place it back into this level, like so. And now you have a scaled up glow piece without having to worry about getting mega hack. Yeah. I do love this custom build tab here. I've got the entirety of VSC copy pasted into it. I don't know why. <laughs> Alright, the next tip involves this edit special button here. You may notice when you place most blocks, you can't actually select it. It's grayed out. But the two main blocks that this works with is basically anything in this tab, any rotating objects, you can edit special and actually edit how much it rotates. This is the number of degrees per second it rotates. So I normally go to like 30 if I want a nice slow rotation. And you can see how that looks right here. But what you can also do is go here and disable the rotation so it just stays still right there. Something that you don't do very often, but sometimes it can be really, really handy. For example, something I used to do quite a bit when this feature first came out was actually use these ones and then disable the rotation. They kind of look like spikes. I don't know, they're kind of neat. Now this edit special tab can also be used for orbs right here. If I click edit special, you can click allow multi activate. And basically what that allows you to do is click the orb twice. Let me see if I can get this. I'm gonna scale up the orbs to make this a little bit more easy on myself. <laughs> You can see I could click that one twice, but with the second orb, doesn't matter how much I click, 
it's just not gonna happen. Whether with this one, I can click it. Yeah, I think I clicked that four times. <laughs> so that's a really handy tool, especially if you wanna do double clicks. So that's clicking the mouse button and the space bar at the same time like that. You can do kind of like an upwards click on the green orb. The next tip is what these different tabs actually mean. This tab is just details. None of these are animated and almost all of them can be colored to whatever you want. But this tab over here, the jump orb tab, everything that's not like an orb, portal, or like any of these collectibles here is actually animated. Every single one of these objects is animated. So if your level's looking very static, you can just select one of these and put them in and just see how it looks. Every single one of these objects is animated in some way. And while I'm in this tab, I do want to quickly mention what these different blocks do. D blocks are purely for the wave game mode where you'd normally crash into a floor like this. If you put D blocks either inside or on top like so, you'll actually just slide on that surface. Really, really handy. J blocks are when you'd normally hold out of an orb and jump it'll stop you from doing that. So you can see if I click out of this blue orb here, I jump there. But if I put a J block either once again inside or on top of the block, I'll just go down. I won't actually jump. You have to click separately to jump like that. S blocks just stop a dash orb, pretty simple. And for H blocks, when you'd normally hit your head and die, I can't do this in the editor because it's buggy in the editor. But you can see you'd normally die there. If you actually put some H blocks there, you can hit your head off the top there without dying. All right, now we're getting to the slightly more complicated things. The next thing I wanna talk about is in the pause menu here and is the build helper button. And to show this, I need to set up some form of a moving or rotating or something object. And to do that, I'm just gonna do a door that opens up here. All right, I've set up this moving object here that moves up when you get to it, very simple. But you can see if we copy paste this like so, you'll see that both of these objects actually move at the same time and it doesn't work how you'd want it to. So what you can actually do is select these objects here that you want to move differently and then select build helper like so. And this will essentially give these a new group that isn't used yet and give this move trigger a new group as well. And that means that these both will move separately, doing the same thing, but separately. And this doesn't just work with move triggers, this works with every single trigger here, I'm pretty sure. Just make sure that you have the trigger selected that you wanna copy the action of and have the objects that you want the action to happen on selected. Because if I just select this wall, copy paste it, and then build helper, that'll do absolutely nothing because you don't have a trigger selected. All right, and for the last tip here, I wanna talk a little bit about altering colors here. So first thing, as I'm sure you're aware, if you go into here, here and select color one, you can alter the color to whatever you'd like. Blending or not blending, I made a video explaining that, but also if I copy paste this, what you can also do is go into this up here, which is the HSV. The hue basically shifts what color it is. So you can see now it's more of a pinky color. Keep shifting it more and it'll go to more of a yellow. It just basically shifts the hue. The saturation makes it more and less, well, saturated. Lower the saturation all the way down and it'll become more of a white color. And then of course we have the brightness as well. And that basically makes it brighter and darker. It's hard to see with this color. Adjust the brightness up like so, and now it's brighter, or I can adjust the brightness down and make it a little bit darker. And the really cool thing about this is that if I start with this and then slowly adjust the hue by like plus 20 each time, and let's just make it a bit of a brighter color, you can see we have a little bit of a rainbow here. But if I go ahead and alter the color, you can see that all of these colors alter like this, and you can create a really, really cool rainbow effect. But on top of that, there's also another thing you can do, which let's go into the background here. Let's set this background to a nice purpley color as well, like so. What I can do is let's go into the ground and we can check copy color here. And then I can select basically any channel ID. So I'm gonna select the background here. That'll basically mean that the ground is the same color as the background as you can see. And I can also adjust the brightness, saturation and hue values to whatever I'd like. But you can also go ahead and do this in a color channel like this. Do copy color and I'll copy the color of the background, make it eh, a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit less saturated type thing like that. And now if I, for example, put a background pulse here, you can see now that this block is also affected. You can see that there. So the ground, background, and this block is affected. Even though they're three separate color channels, they're just using the copy color thing. And also if you wanted to stop copying the color, you can just go ahead and put down a color trigger and set it to something completely different and it'll stop copying the color of the background. And I mean, you can also do go ahead and put copy color into this as well. So there's a lot of options with the copy color thing. But yeah, boom, that is 10 different tips in the editor. Hopefully these helped, hopefully these were handy. I know a lot of this stuff is stuff that I get comments about quite a bit and I didn't discover myself for quite a long time. So I hope this was kind of handy. I figured I could have gone like full scripted with this, but I wanted to try just kind of hopping in and recording this real time. I thought it could be a little bit more fun. I hope that you'll become a bit more of an efficient creator from this. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to end this video off here. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. And of course, as usual, big, big thank you to all the members on screen now, but especially Mary and Crazy. Appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Whoa.